Bert Allen with the Bert Allen Show. Nina and Betty, thank you so much for your time. Very excited to chat Jack Ryan. You know, this question is for you. Fans have been waiting for another season, another run, another outing with Mr. Jack Ryan. Has it hit you yet? How excited the fans are to finally have another season? It's been a minute. I know it's taken a bit, but uh, to to be honest, I'm as excited as they are. I guess you know. So and they're in for a good ride because it's very fast paced. It's lots of action, but there's also some real good character study in this. You can get close to the characters. I hope you know, and you get to feel for them. So you really root for them. And to the, they have to make very fast-paced decisions <laughs> along the way, and uh, it's just a very, very exciting season. At least f from my perspective, it was amazing to to be working on it. An adrenaline rush, it is. Thank you so much. <laughs> hey guys, this is James Wilson from uh, Movie Death Was I appreciate you guys sitting down with us today. Uh, this is for either of you. Were you guys familiar with Jack Ryan, you know, season one and two? Did you watch them before you were cast in the show at all? So I, I, I watched them, yeah. I, I had seen season one and two and was very drawn into it and the, the entertainment side of it, but also, like I said before, like this kind of... The, the, you get very close to the characters, the, the 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 ones that enter each season, but of course mainly the three guys that that <laughs> lead you through this Jack Ryan universe, you know, which is so exciting. So to fight, to actually get to be part of it was somewhat um, mind blowing, really. You want me to answer that? I can. Um, I, 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 I wasn't familiar with this series, um, but I did know, I did grow up with Harrison Ford as Jack Ryan. Uh, but what I love about John Krasinski as Jack Ryan in these series is that they're very, it's very obviously modernized, but there's a sense of just familiarity that I think you can have in in an everyday it's a different everyday man like Harrison Ford has his everyday man but he still feels very just like <laughs> of a piece and of a time and Jack John Krasinski feels like like he is my neighbor <laughs> or like my friend from college he just has a very sort of like different everyday feel and the series just allows for more time to delve into other characters and their worlds and that's a gift, I think, for us as well as the audience. Hi, Jamie Ruby Sci-Fi Vision. Thanks for talking to us today. So what was it, though, particularly about each of your characters that you connected with right away when you read the scripts for both of you? <laughs> I, I really connected with this woman's need to be on and need to be uh, I don't want to use any descriptive, but she's she's got a very tough job, and I think she does so with very much like a you know obviously in, intelligence, uh, but grace and dignity. I I hope and but within that, on top of that, we see the pressure that she has because she has a boss too, and mm -hmm. that's an a very interesting layer that I I really can tap into. Yeah, and for me it was, I mean, I play the the president of Czechia, so uh, a politician who probably ha had a past in politics, and then we meet her at the point where she's like on the top of her game, and she's a very calm, collected, very intelligent, witty, uh, fun person in a way, you know, and and then at the very beginning, as it should happen in the Jack Ryan universe, something happens and her whole world blows apart. And not only her world, she actually has to get to grips with whatever decision she is making potentially as the outcome of a third world war, you know. So 
the stakes are very high <laughs> this time. And the way how she's being written and what on a personal level is being thrown at her at the same time and how she deals with it and how she handles herself, like, like Betty says, I hope my character also has this kind of dignity and but, but strong-mindedness, you know, that she makes the right decisions at the right time because she she has the guts to follow her instincts and not listening to anyone else. Um, that that I've, I really loved about the character. Well, both really fun characters. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Nina, will we be seeing you speak Czech this season on Jack Ryan or maybe doing something you haven't done in a series or on screen before? Yeah, the thing is, I learned the whole part in Czech. <laughs> <laughs> but then it turned out that the decision was we're gonna do it all in English. <laughs> so I have it all in me. It was quite a challenge because I think it's the most difficult language you can get into your mouth. Wow. But through working on that, I, I that helped me so much to learn about Czechia, about you know the, the people that I am the president of, and I want to do justice to that. So um, it was worth the while, but you won't hear me speaking Czech. I don't know. That's yeah, just... <laughs> <laughs> Betty, this question is for you. I love your work, and you often play a lot of characters and have stature, I think would be a good way to describe it, <laughs> and a lot of importance. When playing a character like this, or similarly, what is important to you as an actor or as a storyteller that you go, maybe it's a checkbox of things that you look for, or is it one particular thing that has to draw you in immediately to decide that you want to commit your time to it as, as an actor, as this being your profession? Um, well, thank you for the compliment. And uh, to answer your question, I, I'll say that I do like a challenge. And yes, I've played characters like this. And, and that actually gave me pause before accepting the job because I wasn't sure if I wanted to sort of retread familiar territory for myself. Um, but what I thought was going to be so satisfying about this world, coming into this world, uh, coming into this role is that it would be a chance to really kind of be <laughs> put in this pressure cooker, having to just be so, forgive the word, intelligent. <laughs> Working for the CIA, she has to be very intelligent. She has a lot of information and intelligence gathered, and she has to she just has to drive through and drive the story that she's a part of. Um, and yeah, within that, there's all this going here, going there. There's just like, there's just a lot that you have to sort of commit to, to be, to, to know that you can be this person who is in charge. And she also has this pressure from above her. And, and that's really compelling too, because I, I definitely know what it's like to have that pressure to be questioned, to to be perhaps seen or dismissed potentially as incompetent and <laughs> potentially fired um, and not given the benefit of the doubt. So there was a lot to really, you know, be stretched and challenged by. I could see that. And having seen all the episodes, I definitely feel like we're getting something new. I mean, everything you've done is great, and I do mean that sincerely. And it's fun to watch you uh, to, to create a different kind of character. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, Betty, you've gotten a chance to star in two things I consider to be immensely underrated as top creative counterparts, and I wish more people would have seen them and talked about them at the time. Yes. <laughs> do, you think, do you think getting to play those characters in those you know, shows and movies can prepare you to play Elizabeth Wright and Jack Ryan a little more about the twist and turn? Absolutely, and I definitely drew from certain uh, parts of those characters and that world, you know, that intensity, that having to like come in and just really <laughs> crank up the intensity without actually that having that it on set, you know, like we're not actually, <laughs> you know, dealing with 
a nuclear bomb. Like we're having to create that from thin air, and that can be challenging. And it's a, it's a. So I did feel like those prepared, those projects prepared me for this, and I feel very fortunate to be a part of those projects. And I hope that one day <laughs> people will uh, also have the the be, the privilege of seeing them, especially upgrade. I love that one. <laughs> it's such a. I plug upgrade, upgrade every chance I get. And I highly recommend it to everybody that I ever see. Yeah, it's such a weird one. <laughs> <laughs> that Lee Winnell, he is weird. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I was going to say, I like upgrade too. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, both of your characters obviously have really important jobs in different ways. But can you sort of talk about specifically the, the prep and, and like the research side of it that you both did to kind of, to, you know, fill those shoes? Well, I was basically lucky enough my, my, from my background, uh, my father was a politician and so was in parliament, in the German parliament for eight years. And as a child, I kind of entered that world through him and kind, kind of got to learn about the, the back world of politics that you see in public, you know, and how things are being discussed and actually choice uh, decisions come to fruition and, and all of that. So I was basically more leaning on the script, to be honest, because it was so well written, my character, on a personal level, but also on the way how she was portrayed as a politician and how she deals with all the men that are entering her office, basically. How, how she handles them informed me of what kind of a, I thought she's a very good politician because she she's highly intelligent she knows a lot um, but she also can draw from her instinct and she relies on her instinct which when I see the women out there that are in politics and then that may be also helming nations they uh, they have that kind of quality they also they have a very specific personality to themselves that no one can rattle on, you know. So I, I, uh, I wanted to give that to, to Elena. I had the honor of um, having many conversations with a former CIA officer who is um, also a young black woman. And it was, it was so rewarding and so useful to, to hear her stories um, and to hear how her background, her upbringing, her exposure to other cultures was such an asset for her in within the organization um, and on all the challenges that she's faced being in this predominantly white male <laughs> organization. And so it, yeah, I was really fortunate to have her as a resource. I was introduced to her by Wendell Pierce, um, who was an extraordinary person to to uh, have as a resource as well. Great, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, and one more question. Go for it, Jamie. Lee, this is set in beautiful Budapest. Talk about mm -hmm. some of your favorite places to film. Uh, definitely Budapest. Budapest is a lot of fun. Even though when we first got there, when I first got there, I'm sure when you did too, mm -hmm. it was there was an eight o'clock curfew. Oh yeah, nothing was open. Yes. It was really stark, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I don't know about this food. But by the end of it, it was so. Just, I had so much fun. They had a Christmas market, and the restaurants were were all open. They have all these outdoor. Uh, bars and restaurants. It's just a really fun city. Um, but I did really love Vienna too. I just didn't get to spend too much time there. But it's a beautiful city, a city that feels like it's in the in the clouds. <laughs> it's so creamy and white, all the buildings. <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah, I'm really lucky. We're really lucky that we get to yeah, travel definitely. the world on this one job. <laughs>